Okay, so now let's talk about Project Resource Management Chapter 9. Before I get started, let me mention that if you're interested, we have lots of free PMP prep materials at projectprep.org. We've got cheat sheets, full-length practice tests, note cards, lots of stuff that should be pretty helpful. Okay, so there's six processes in this chapter. Two are in planning, plan resource management and estimate activity resources. Three are in executing, acquire resources, develop team, and manage team. And then control resources is in monitoring and controlling. So with planned resource management, we're documenting how we're going to estimate and acquire and manage the resources. How we're going to do it. And then in estimate activity resources, we're estimating the amount of manpower, materials, and equipment that we need. And then in executing, we're going to acquire those resources. And then also, resources can be not just people, they can be materials as well. But in executing, we're going to develop our team people, improving team skills and relations to enhance project performance. So this could include coaching and training them, getting them ready to go, and then managing the team, tracking team performance, providing feedback, and resolving issues. Those are all, those three are in executing, acquire, develop, and manage. And then we're going to control resources, monitor plan versus actual resource usage. So as we go throughout this chapter, we're going to talk about several tools and techniques that are have used throughout. One is data representation. That's a, a tool or technique of plan resource management. We're documenting how to get the resources we need. And here's a few different tools we're using that are kind of in this rep data representation category. You have an organizational chart that's a hierarchy of who you need on the project. Then you have a responsibility chart. Uh, the most common responsibility chart is called a RACI matrix. We'll talk about that. And you could have role descriptions, kind of detailed descriptions of what uh, people are planned to do. You're figuring out um, who you need. So hierarchical charts are um, show positions in a graphical top-down format, and they're arranged according to an organization's departments, units, or teams. It's sometimes called an OBS or an RBS. An OBS is an organizational breakdown structure, and it really goes down to like a department or a team level. And then there's an RBS, a resource breakdown structure that goes down to a resource, individual resource level. So an RBS really goes to a lower level. And then a responsibility matrix shows resources assigned to do work packages. So who's going to do what? A responsibility matrix uh, helps um, define that. It can be by department or resource. And it helps ensure clear responsibilities or clear divisions of roles to avoid confusion. So everybody knows what they're supposed to be doing. It's also known as a Responsibility Assignment Matrix, an RAM. The most common type, though, is a RACI matrix. So RACI stands for Responsible, Accountable, Consulted, and Informed. And so uh, if you're responsible for a certain work package, you're the person who's actually going to be assigned to do the work. You're going to get it done. If you're accountable for a work package, you're the person who makes the final decision and has ultimate ownership. It's oftentimes the boss of whoever's responsible. It doesn't have to be, though. And then if you are consulted on a work package, you're someone who must be consulted before a decision or action is taken. You're consulted ahead of time. And if you're informed, you're the person who must be informed that this action has been taken. So consulted is before, informed is really after. So you're looking at, in this matrix, different departments or roles, and then work packages. Who's responsible, accountable, consulted, and informed for these things? Then there's text-oriented formats. Remember, these are all data representation techniques as we plan resource management. Uh, these have detailed role descriptions, also known as position descriptions, and they can include things like the responsibilities of the role, what authority they have, and what competencies and quali qualifications they need. Now let's talk about acquiring resources, how you're going to acquire the resources that you need. Here are some of the tools of that process. Resources could be pre-assigned, meaning team members are selected in advance, and there's not really a choice of who to involve. There's also could be negotiation. This is important in functional organizations. If you don't have control of resources on your project team, you may have to negotiate with functional managers to get the resources that you need. Then there's multi-criteria decision analysis, ranking potential team members on various factors. You're ranking them um, to kind of determine who would be a best fit. And then virtual team. This is another way to acquire a team. Do it virtually. These are teams with little or no face-to-face -face interaction. 
And here's some of the outputs, the key outputs of uh, this acquire resources process. You're going to have a resource calendar which shows you the working days and shifts which are resources available. This is going to be important if you have resources in China, for example. They're not probably not going to be working during Chinese New Year, or part of it at least, and so that would be on your resource calendar. That's going to be an output of acquiring resources. And then also resource assignments, which tells you who will do what. It can be a directory, memos, names in the project management plan, or so on. These are resource assignments. Who will do what. And then we're going to be developing the team. Uh, in this process, here are some of the key tools. Uh, Co-location. Remember, this is I should say this is developing the team. We're, we're training them, coaching them, kind of getting them ready, building their capabilities so they can perform the work without issue. So co-location can be a tool here. We're positioning our team close to each other to improve communication and productivity. Virtual teams could also be um, another method or tool. Interpersonal skills is the ability to manage relationships across teams and to kind of help our team work together or start working together. You can also use training, especially if we're on a project where some of the team members that we have are not as familiar with our um, the industry or the, the field. And you could use recognitions and rewards and individual team assessments. These are tools that you could use as you um, develop the team and get them ready to work.